Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, liturgically speaking, the church does celebrate the third Sunday after Trinity, and I am basing my sermon this morning upon the gospel, <clears throat> excuse me, appointed for today, coming to us from the 15th chapter of the gospel of St. Luke, which I will read to you right now. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and the nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it upon his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my, my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman hath having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, Can you think, those of you who are watching this video, can you think of a time in your life when you had lost something that you needed or lost something that was very valuable or misplaced something that you needed urgently? Can you remember a time when that happened? And when it did happen, do you remember the desperation with which you search for that item. Whether we can think of a lost file that we need for desperately for a report that needs to be sent to our bosses this morning, or if we need something that we need for a project that we're working on and we've misplaced it, or parents, their child has gone missing. In each of these examples, we can think of the time in which we desperately sought out that item that was so important to us that we needed to find. We were desperate to find. With that in mind, I would dare say certainly that is how it is with God. God is seeking out his lost children and he's desperate to get them back. Psalm 119, verse 176. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Certainly, God, as I stated to you, dear friends, God loves us that much that he goes after the lost sheep that he goes after those who have gone astray, that he goes after those who, again, are missing from his fold. Jeremiah 31, verse 3, states the following, The Lord appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. 
For you see, dear friends, that is indeed the reason, the very reason why God seeks after his lost sheep, why he goes after those who have gone away from him, because he loves us. There is no other reason, dear friends. God does not gain anything because he himself is God. He does not need us for anything. He simply loves us. And this is why he goes after us. This is why he seeks after us. This is why he searches after us. Because he loves us. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 16 states, My people have been lost sheep. Without a doubt, we have been lost because, again, we've gone in searching of happiness in other areas, happiness in other places, happiness in places, quite frankly, where we shouldn't be. And yet, as human beings, we're hard-headed, it takes a lot to get us to fully comprehend and fully understand that our true happiness lies in God, not in things of the world, not in things down here, not in things here below. Our true happiness is found in God. But oftentimes it takes a lifetime to discover that, doesn't it? Because as human beings, we search after the pleasures in which the world has to offer. We search after the riches in which the world has to offer. We search after those things that are down here, here, earthbound. We search after these things that are nice and shiny and bright and they grab our attention. And in so doing, we find ourselves going down this path and that path, searching this way and that way. And before you know it, we're like the proverbial lost sheep. We have lost our way and don't know how to get back again. But you see, dear friends, the beauty of God, the beauty of the love that God has for us, he comes searching after us. Ezekiel chapter 34, 16, we hear this. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. Without a doubt, dear friends, without a doubt, this verse that I just read to you describes the love of God that he has for his children. Because as we're talking about this morning, without a doubt, he will seek out his children which are lost. He will seek for us no matter how lost we are, no matter how far we have strayed away from him, no matter how divided we have become, God will seek us out. And he will bind up that which was broken. Do you have a broken relationship? Do you have something which is broken? Your heart, your emotions, your mind, your soul. Is there something broken in your life which needs repaired? As Ezekiel reminds us, dear friends, God will bind up that which is broken. And he will also strengthen that which is sick. So often when we feel sickly, so often when we feel poorly, we just don't feel like doing anything and everything hurts us. And, but God, is the doctor. 
who will strengthen what is sick. What ails us, he will cure. What feels poorly, he will be, bring back to the fullness of health. And he does each of these things. He seeks for us. He binds our broken bones. He strengthens what ails us. He does all of this because he loves us. And out of love, dear friends, he wants what's best for us. St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man, our blessed Savior, for the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. And again, dear friends, that's you and that's I, that's fallen humanity. He has come to save that which was lost. And again in St. Luke chapter 9, verse 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. You see, dear friends, again, so many of us struggle to hang on to keep the things, the valuables of this world. And yet, we know that these things that the world has to offer, that we're so desperate to find to begin with, to latch on to and hold, these things never are lasting. Things of value very quickly lose their value. Things of this world... They, they, they fade away to nothing. And yet, the one thing that is truly everlasting, the one thing that will never fade away, the one thing, again, that is always of value is, without a doubt, the love of God and the love that He has for His children, for you and for I. So this day, let us continue, dear friends. Let us continue to stay close to God, to stay close to He that loves us, and to return to the shepherd, the true shepherd of our souls. God bless you, dear friends, this day. God bless you, your friends, your family, and your loved ones. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, my friends.